Our topic for today is image transforms. Image transforms basically refers to a class of unitary matrices used for representing the images. Now, so far we have seen that how one can use a transformation matrix to transform a three dimensional world point into a two dimensional camera point by applying some kind of a transformation matrix. So basically that was a point transformation. Okay? But in this case we are going to consider image transformation in the sense that given one image with us, okay, we would like to transform that into a different image of the same size okay and then from that image if possible we should try to recover back the original image the question is that why at all we are going in for such a kind of transformation well image transformations has got a very wide use okay and uh, the uses which uh, one can list out are in the case of filtering of images okay that is to say when we would like to eliminate or reduce the effects of uh, higher spatial frequency components okay or lower frequency lower spatial frequency components by applying a high pass filter or a low pass filter basically the filtering operation can be performed very easily if one transforms the spatial domain image into a frequency domain image and then one apply the filtering okay and then one can apply the reverse transformation to get back the filtered image it has got a wide use okay because it is very often found that filtering in the frequency domain okay uh, has got many advantages over filtering in spatial domain then transforms has got a use applicability in data compression now we know that in order to represent i mean in order to store an n by n image okay each having 8 bits of intensity we really require n square bytes of information in the computer so not only it requires a large storage space if our n is going to be very large moreover if we are transmitting that image from one place to the other okay then the requirement of transmission bandwidth is very high especially if we expect that image to be transmitted at the real time okay at a rate of 30 times uh, i mean 30 frames per second if you'd like to transmit then we require a very high bandwidth channel so the idea is that we may like to do a kind of data compression okay whereby instead of transmitting the n by n original image if we can transmit the transformed image and possibly instead of transforming the entire transform image if we can transmit only some useful portion of the transform image okay a part of the transformed image which can approximate the original image very well okay then we need not uh, uh, the uh, we need not have to send the entire image rather we would send only a part of the transformed image and thereby we can save some storage space and when we are transmitting the image from one place to the other then uh, we need not have to use a very high bandwidth channel it may be transmitted over a relatively limited bandwidth channel okay and apart from filtering and data compression many a times the image transforms are used in feature extraction okay that is to say out of the image we may have some specific points or specific fix, uh, pixels of interest okay the edge pixels the corners and so on okay and such kind of feature extraction operation can also be done in the transform domain rather than doing it in the original image domain 
so it has got a use applicability okay and that is why we need to study in the image processing course the aspect of image transformations very much so today instead of going into some specific image transformation techniques okay which we will discuss in the subsequent lectures okay today i would like to give you a basic introduction to all these image transform process okay that is how to uh, choose the transformation in general i mean what is the general composition of the transformation matrix its general properties those things we are going to discuss so that all the specific image transformations okay automatically follow from that now as i was telling you in the beginning itself that image transforms okay basically refers to a class of unitary matrices okay which are used for representing the image used for representing images now what is a unitary matrix can anybody tell what is unitary matrix well if we have a matrix a supposing an n by n matrix we have okay now if we uh, i mean the matrix for which its inverse okay is equal to the transpose of its conjugate okay that is to say if a inverse is same as that of a star transpose okay in that case the matrix a is called a unitary matrix now what we will attempt to do is that we will try to represent the image okay as a series summation of a set of such unitary matrices but why we do that let us again go into the uh, one dimensional signal analogy if somebody gives us a one dimensional signal okay this being the time axis this being the amplitude axis and we have some time domain signal like this now if somebody asks us to represent this image eh, i mean represent this signal represent this one dimensional signal okay how do we do that we can represent okay this one dimensional signal as a series summation of some orthogonal basis function i can hear that some people were saying when i was uh, saying that uh, which uh, mm, uh, type of function i mean we can represent it as a series summation some people started saying that it is sinusoidal now sinusoidal functions are of course used in fact you remember that for the case of one dimensional signals okay one can represent it as a fourier series summation okay but the thing is that it need not be just sinusoidal signals alone okay it can be a set of any orthogonal signals okay so what we really want to do is that represent this one dimensional signal by a series summation of instead of calling as series summation of several sinusoids i generalize it and call it as series summation of orthogonal basis functions what is meant by orthogonal a set of orthogonal basis function when i say what does it mean basically it means that if we take okay uh, 
one such function, okay, out of the set of functions, if we choose one function, any one function, okay, and find out its product with yet another function, and we sum it up over uh, an interval, okay, over the entire interval, then the result is going to be 0. If we integrate that, the result is going to be 0 if the uh, two uh, functions okay, happen to be unequal and it is non-zero only if the two functions happen to be equal. That is the property of orthogonal functions and you know very well that the exponential functions, sinusoidal functions, they perform the orthogonal property very well and that is why they are used very widely okay, for representing the one dimensional signals. But in general we can say that we can uh, uh, represent it as a series summation of orthogonal basis functions. And orthogonal basis functions means again one dimensional orthogonal basis functions. Now if we extend this idea to two dimensions, okay, what we really want to do is that we would like to represent an image okay, as a series summation of several basis functions, again orthogonal basis functions, but the thing is that in that case, that function is going to be a two dimensional function, so rather we can call it as orthogonal basis image or rather we can say that the two dimensional signal or rather an image can be represented as a series summation of basis images of a set of basis images all right now the one which i had drawn over here happens to be a continuous signal but as you know that we are not dealing with continuous signal anymore we are dealing with discrete signal so what we really have is not a continuous waveform like this rather if we are considering a one dimensional sequence okay the one dimensional sequence will look like this we take a one dimensional signal which i am representing by un okay where n is an index that lies between 0 and n minus 1. If we consider this entire set of u n with n lying between 0 to n minus 1, what does it result? This set which I have written okay, is a set of samples. So this, re so this really represents a an one dimensional sequence. So this represents an one dimensional sequence. Okay. And what is the size of this? The size is equal to capital N because our small n which is the index is defined from 0 to capital N minus 1. So that means to say that I have got capital and I mean this sequence is of size capital N okay and we can represent this as a vector I can call it as a as the u vector okay which is basically an n dimensional vector all right now what I would like to do is that if we multiply okay or rather if we pre multiply this vector okay by an n by n matrix let us take an n by n by n matrix of size capital a so capital a is a matrix of size capital n by n okay if we pre multiply u by a that means to say if we perform this operation okay where u is u can be represented as a column vector okay if we pre multiply it by an n by n matrix 
okay what does it result it results in a matrix or a vector it results in a vector okay again it results in a n dimensional vector and that and that vector i am calling as a vector v so i have an original vector u i had pre multiplied that with the a matrix okay we are going to discuss what this a matrix is going to be and what are we going to call this a matrix but if we pre multiply it with any n by n matrix what we know at this stage is that it results in yet another column vector okay which is v and i can call this v vector to be a transformed vector all right this v vector is a transformed vector because this matrix a which i am uh, with which i am pre multiplying this i can call this as a transformation matrix i am calling this as a transformation matrix so it results in a vector like this now this expression we are getting in matrix notation now instead of writing it in the matrix notation we can write it as a series summation like this okay i can write it as vk equal to summation of n equal to 0 to capital n minus 1 a k n u n okay it's the same thing because in order to get the kth element of this v vector okay we have to multiply the a k nth element of the a matrix with the nth uh, component of the u vector right and this is summed over n equal to 0 to capital n minus 1 okay it is this matrix which i mean this was written in the matrix notation this is written as a series summation and this we have to do for how many k's k also can vary from 0 to n minus 1 so this operation we have to perform for 0 less than or equal to k less than or equal to n minus 1 okay now we define this matrix a okay whose elements were this a k n okay we assume that they are unitary matrices and if they are unitary matrices then what is the property we know by their definition by definition okay i have a inverse will be equal to a star transpose so that now if i want to get back the original image u or rather it is not an image i have considered it to be a one dimensional uh, sequence of size n so if i would like to get back the original one dimensional sequence u from the transformed sequence v what i have to do u vector should be the a inverse v okay rather a inverse is same as a star transpose so i can simply write u vector equal to a transpose a star transpose matrix multiplied by v v vector all right and in series summation form the same thing can be written as u of n equals k equal to 0 to capital n minus 1 v k a star k n and in this case also n is defined the index n which i have represented over here index n is to be defined for defined within limits 0 to capital n minus 1 so the index n is varying from 0 to capital n minus 
and we can get back the original sequence u n from this expression. Okay? Let us write it afresh because we will be needing this expression. I mean this is a very important relation for us. This relation is very important. Okay. Any question on this? Well, one minute. I mean, it has been uh, asked that uh, I should uh, change the sequence of this VK and S star K. After all, this is a series summation. Okay. So, it does not matter to us only that whether I write a star k in earlier or I write v k earlier. Okay? This is a series summation form. Of course, in the matrix notation form, I could not have written that. I have to write it as u vector equal to A star transpose v. Any other question? A star transpose has to be taken and then you are saying that? Okay, so what we uh, have to do is uh, we are taking a k n, right? And if we are taking the transpose, then uh, a n k. Okay, I mean we are going to um, uh, discuss this thing little later. Okay. But after taking transpose, we get a k n. After taking the transformation, we are getting a k n. Yes, correct. After taking the transpose, yes. After taking the transpose, we will get a star k n. Okay. Now, this is an important relation for us. And what is the physical interpretation of this? U n is equal to v k a star k n. What does it mean? Physically. This means to say that the original sequence is now being written as as what? As a series summation of some unitary matrices. And th those unitary matrices are this A star K N. Right? AKN is only element. No. AKN is uh, only element, I agree. But this we have done, mind you, this we are doing for n equal to 0 to n minus 1. So ultimately we are composing this entire uh, vector. Okay? And really speaking, the columns, what are the columns of A star T? You will understand, I mean whatever doubts you had asked, okay, that you will understand now. The columns of A star T is what? Okay. The columns of A star T is nothing but it is the set A star K N okay, okay. I am writing it in this form. So I think does that clear your doubt? Uh, what I have written is, what is this expression? A star k n, okay? And I have defined n from 0 to n minus 1. So, what is this set signifying? The set of all A star k n, okay? n defined from 0 to n minus 1, what does that signify? This represent a set of not rows anymore, it has become columns because we have taken the transpose. Okay? So, because we have taken the transpose, this has now become columns. Okay? So, basically what we have is a set of columns okay? and which is represented by this A star k n, n varying from 0 to n minus 1 and these vectors a k star, okay. This A k stars are nothing but vectors, okay. This is these are known as the basis vectors of A. 
So, A star k are called basis vectors of A. Okay. So, what we are doing once again let us try to analyze in order to get the u nth element of the original sequence I have to multiply the uh, a k nth okay, a k nth vector with the v k with v k I have to multiply this okay, and I have to rather with uh, v k vector and uh, that vector size is of n capital N okay, so that I get u of n and I have to compose that entire all the elements of that vector. So, in the process okay, the set of vectors the set of column vectors which I am taking together what does that become that becomes a matrix that becomes nothing but the transformation matrix. Okay. So, it is very important to note that we are representing the original sequence okay, as a series summation of some basis functions and the basis functions over here are this a star k n and what are v k s then? v k s are then the coefficients of such summation series. Let us not call it as transformations anymore. Okay. When we are representing the total image as if to say that I would like to get or reconstruct that image okay, from, a, from, from a various set of from a set of basis images okay, and each such basis image is multiplied by its own coefficients just like the way in the case of uh, one dimensional signals okay whenever we are doing a fourier series summation what we are doing is that all the different frequency components okay we are multiplying by some specific coefficients okay in order to reconstruct the original waveform okay very similarly we are adding up these basis functions with their coefficients now, so far we have considered only a one dimensional sequence because our u n was defined within limits 0 to capital N minus 1. All right. This was the definition of uh, u n, but the thing is that we are having images. An image as, as I told you is of size n by n. Okay. So, it is possible to represent an image also as an one dimensional sequence and a one dimensional sequence of size n square. Okay. We can represent image as one dimensional sequence of size n square and represent it in the same form of course, but of course, we have a better representation for two dimensional images. Any question at this stage is this thing very clearly understood that Basically, our objective now is to represent a signal okay, by a series summation of basis functions. Okay, uh, what exactly do you want me to repeat on VK? What is VK and all right. I mean, as a physical interpretation of this, I repeat whatever I have said. The original sequence U n is being recovered, okay, as a series summation of the basis functions, which is given by A star K n, and V k s are the coefficients of those series summations. All right, and the definitions of A star K n is like this that if we take the individual columns of A star transpose, okay, then what we are getting is 
the uh, I mean what we are getting is the a k vector ok a k vector is called the a, a k star vector which is called as the basis vector of a which is defined ok as a star k n ok that is to say the kth column rather and with n varying from 0 to n minus 1 this vector gives me the a k vector all right and the set of this a k vectors what does it give us the complete a matrix all right so i am representing the original sequence as a series summation of the uh, basis vectors and the coefficients v k anybody having any doubts on this any confusions Okay. Well, I have not defined for the two dimensions. This is defined for one dimension, uh, for one dimension. But as I told you that I can represent an image, okay, in a one-dimensional vector form also. Any other question? I represent UN in terms of summation of vectors only. Yes, summation of correct. Um, uh, we are representing. Uh, UN as as a summation of column vectors. Yes, as a, as a summation of column vectors. Any other doubts? All right. Now, representation of two-dimensional signals. So, very similarly, a two-dimensional for a two-dimensional signal, I can write. that the two dimensional sequence I am now writing as UMN, UMN ok and the transformation that I am applying is that I am multiplying this UMN with another A matrix ok, this is A, uh, this is A manth element of the matrix and the matrix is having an index k l ok I will explain this index ok little later on ok the matrix is of size n by n and we are taking the matrix having index k l ok and we are multiplying this by u of m n and we are summing up this over m n equal to 0 to n minus 1 ok and this operation we have to do so we have to do this for just one for computing just one k lth element of the v k I mean the transformation I mean v k l is basically the transformed image. The original image is u of m n, the transformed image of is v k l and in order to compute just a single element of the transformed image, I have to do the entire operation, this multiplication operation I have to do over the entire original image space because u of m n is the index of the image, m and n are the index, okay, special index rather with m and n varying from 0 to n minus 1. So, we are completely covering the entire n by n dimension of the image and we are multiplying this with a k l m n ok. That means to say that we are multiplying this by the matrix a, but a matrix having index k l. This is just to compute one element k l ok. And what do we have to do? We have to compute V K L for an entire n by n image. So, really speaking, our expression will be complete only when we write that K L, both K and L, must lie between zero and n minus one. All right. 
Now, this is the transformation expression. So, by defining this way, what I get is I get a transformed image. Okay, and what is this A K L M N? A particular K L, let us say, a particular K L, and this A M N, this represents a matrix, isn't it? Okay, and if I consider all these K L's, then how many matrices do we have? We have n square number of matrices. This entire set, please listen very carefully. This entire set, okay, is actually composed of n square number of matrices. And each matrix of size n square again, n by n again. So there are n square number of matrices, each matrix having a size n by n. So, basically A K L M N represents only a single matrix, but the set of A K L M N okay, defined over all K and L, again K and L are varying from 0 to N minus 1. So, if this set is defined over the entire K L domain, then we are having N square number of matrices, okay, each of size N by N. Okay. And this set is basically called as the image transform. So, this is the image transform. And this is a set of complete orthonormal discrete basis function. I will define the orthonormality, so do not worry about that. Okay. So, this is basically at this stage it suffices to know that this is our transformation which we are applying in order to get V K L. Now, this is the original transformation let me call this as equation 1. Okay. Now, if I want to recover the original image from the transformed image V K L, okay, what do I have to do? I have to do, do the reverse operation. That means to say, I have to just multiply this V's, okay, the transformed image by what? By the A star by the A star matrix very simply. Okay. So, the inverse transformation expression is U of M n we can represent as a summation, a series summation of V k L A star k L index M n k L equal to 0 to n minus 1, where m n vary from 0 to n minus capital N minus 1. This is equation number 2. So, using this equation, we are representing the original image as a series summation of the several basis functions. All right. All right, and we have uh, we have done that transformation. So consider that that transformation has been done. So I, I mean, every time I am not writing a star uh, t. Okay, that I mean it is after doing that transformation you are getting this. I mean transpose rather, not transformation. Sorry. Now. I was defining this set of A K L okay. this was defined as the image transform and I told you that it fulfills two properties okay. and what are those two properties?
the image transform set which I had got, this should fulfill two properties. The first property is orthonormality. The definition of orthonormality, I mean, the, from definition itself, everything will be clear to you. AMN with Kth index, and if you multiply it with AMN having K star L star index, okay, then orthonormality definition, okay, says that this should be equal to. Kronecker delta okay, k minus k star comma l minus l star. That means to say that when k is equal to k prime, when l is equal to l prime, okay, then it becomes a discrete delta function, okay, which is the Kronecker delta function and this is the definition of orthonormality. Okay. That means to say that only if k equal to k and l equal to l prime, this will be there. Okay. Otherwise, it becomes 0. When k is not equal to k, l is not equal to l prime, it becomes 0. So, and the second property is a completeness property. And the completeness property states that taking again the summations a k l m n sorry this was please make this correction this should have been a star k prime l prime okay for orthonormality the definition is that this should be a star the conjugate of this all right a star k prime l prime m n. So, please make this correction. And the completeness definition states a star k l not k prime anymore k l m prime n prime okay, with k l varying from 0 to n minus 1. This is to, that is to say the entire summation is defined over space k l equal to 0 to n minus 1. This is equal to delta m minus m prime n minus n prime. That means to say that completeness ensures that only when m prime becomes equal to m and n prime becomes equal to n, okay, then this will be 1, okay, otherwise this expression will be 0. Okay, we will see how uh, and where we use these properties of orthonormality and completeness. Okay. Again, look at our expression. That is to say, how we get u of m n from the v k l, I mean from the basis vectors a star k l m n. We are getting it as a series summation of the basis functions and this is multiplied, this is being multiplied by the coefficients. These are the v k l's are nothing but the transform coefficients. These elements, the elements of v k l indicates the transform coefficients and if we define the set V, okay, if I define the set V to be the set of V k L defined over k equal to 0 to n minus 1, L equal to 0 to n minus 1, what do we get? We get the, the set of transformed coefficients, if we define, we get a transformed image. This V becomes an n by n transformed image. Okay.
All right. Now, orthonormality property basically means this. We had seen, again I refer back to the this expression, u of m n was equal to series summation v k l a star k l m n k l was from 0 to n minus 1. So, that means to say if I want to get the original image u of m n, I have to do the series summation over entire n square space. Okay. But if I decide to do instead of doing the series summation over the entire n by n space, if I truncate the space, that is to say instead of going into n by n, if I take a truncation, okay, that is to say for k I go from 0 to p minus 1 where p is less than n and for l I go from 0 to q minus 1 where q is less than n, okay. Then I am only taking a truncated series of this. So, if I take a truncated series, basically can you tell me now that when do we like to take such a kind of truncated series? When we are doing data compression, okay. Because instead of taking the entire n square, we would like to work with a subset, okay. So, that a series summation of the subset itself is sufficient to represent the original image. So, if we take such a kind of truncated series, okay. Let us write that series now as u with index p q m n, okay. And I define that truncated series as follows, summation over k is equal to 0 to p minus 1, summation over l equal to 0 to q minus 1, v k l a star k l m n, okay, p less than or equal to n, q less than or equal to n, okay. So, I have defined a truncated series like this, but if I want to define a truncated series of this form, what should I like to do? I am making some error, is not it? The original image is u of m n and by summing up over a truncated series I get u p q m n and u p q m n is obviously not the same as u m n. So, u m n minus u p q m n is the error and if I square it up then it gives me the squared error, okay. So, let us consider the sum of squared errors, we consider the sum of squared errors which is sigma e square and that is equal to double summation defined over m n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 u of m n minus u p q m n whole square. Okay. So, this is going to be the sum of squared errors that I get in the process. All right. Now, what should we try to do? We should try to minimize this sum of squared errors, is not it? So, if I minimize this sum of squared errors, okay, and minimize with respect to what? That is to say, if I choose the v k l's, okay, in such a manner that the sum of squared errors is minimized. I repeat, if I choose the v k l's so that the sum of squared errors is minimized, do you know what v k's we get? We get the v k's as given by our original transformation expression. We get the v k l's as this. So, if we choose this v k l's, okay, then we will be minimizing the squared error, the sum of squared error. By choosing this v k l's, we will 
minimize the sum of squared errors. Now, when is the error going to be 0? Can anybody tell me? Yes. So the, uh, and this is being ensured by which property? This is being ensured by the completeness property. So if we apply the completeness property as given over here, okay, then we can conclude that when P is equal to Q is equal to N, okay, then the error will be 0. Okay. So, all that we can conclude at this stage is that if we have an image and if we apply a unitary matrix transformation on that, okay, then it is possible to get back the image, okay, as a series summation of those unitary matrices multiplied by certain coefficients. Now, the composition of this unitary matrix is something which we have not yet discussed. Basically, there are a large number of ways whereby we can choose this A matrix. Fourier transformation is one of them and in the field of image processing, there are a number of such orthogonal transformation techniques which are available and we will discuss them okay, shortly. Now, just before we conclude, okay, one aspect which I would like to ask you is about the uh, complexity of computation. Look at this expression. How do I get the transformed image? VKL is a single element of the transformed image and look at the computational complexity. How many multiplications and additions operations we have to do in order to get a single element of VKL? N square number of computations. So, totally how many computations am I doing? N to the power 4 because there are N square elements of VKL. So, every VKL element, for every VKL element I have got N square operation, for N square number of VKL elements I have got N to the power 4 number of operations. So, the computational complexity is order n to the power 4, which is a very heavy order. Okay? And we will see tomorrow if we can uh, reduce the uh, computational complexity. If from order of n to the power 4, we can bring it down to order of n cube. In fact, we can do that if the transformation which we are applying is a separable transformation. Now, so far the transformation A of uh, AKL MN, okay, I have assumed to be a complete transformation, but if I can separate the transformation in M and N, okay, that is to say if I can represent the transformation as a product of transformations in the m direction and transformation in the n direction, okay, then we can reduce the complexity. This we will see in the next class. Any questions? Thank you.